Hi and welcome back to a new video. Today we will talk about one of my new projects because Christmas time is also time for gifts. That's why we will talk about their coaster. You might remember the ruler. That was a project which we did with Elmore almost two years ago. It's basically a PCB ruler with some active circuitry. So you had a microcontroller on it that you were able to program yourself and thus have the RGB light in different modes and stuff, but also to have some basic soldering challenge to get the first steps into SMD soldering. And it was pretty successful, at least from the feedback we got. A lot of people were really hyped about the project, really enjoyed playing around with this and doing the first steps into soldering and playing around with the programming and stuff. However, some people also had the feedback that it was maybe a bit too much with all the programming options, like actually having to program this yourself. So that's why we decided to kind of repeat this in a little bit easier type of project. And that's where the coaster comes into play. And also we will give away 100 of these in today's video. So you can directly go on the link down in the description below where you can find the link for the giveaway. You basically have to enter your email address and your name into the Google form and that's how you participate. As I pointed out, the idea behind the coaster is similar to the ruler because I receive a lot of emails about some kind of broken parts. It could be a mainboard where you knocked off a tiny capacitor or like a CPU with a knocked off capacitor next to the heat spreader or like you have a GPU where you tried to mount your water cooler and your uh, screwdriver slipped a little bit and you knocked off a capacitor. That is things like cases I receive almost daily. And it's actually quite easy to repair this yourself. It's like if it's like just one knocked off SMD part. But usually you wouldn't just randomly try to solder on your GPU or motherboard, right? That's why it's just easier to have something like this where you cannot dam damage something, but there's still a way for you to practice a little bit. We made a total of 1000 units, 200 were already sent out to all my active Patreon supporters, 100 we will give away in today's video. There is still an option to buy them though. You can find them in the Thermal Grizzly shop, you can find the link down below and the rest you can find in the Elmore Labs shop and you can also find a link about that down below. If you look at the front side of the box, you can also find a link which will lead you to the details instructions of how to solder this one. And as you can see by the logo, it's again a cooperation between me and Elmore Labs. If you open the box, you can find four more small boxes inside. The first one is the soldering challenge. This box contains all the tiny SMDs which we don't need for the active circuit, but just to try to get used to the soldering of SMDs first. Then the mechanical box that contains pins, pin headers or like the USB-C controller, semiconductor box that contains the pre-flash microcontroller, which will make it a lot easier this time. So you just have to connect it to USB-C and it will already be working. Also 30 RGB LEDs and the passive components such as the capacitors and resistors. Underneath the small boxes we have the PCBs. Six in total. One is I would call it the main PCB that is also for the control. That's where the microcontroller will be soldered on. That's probably one the one you should do last. And then we have five of these included. You will need one for the coaster to be working, so maybe put one aside and then you can use five for different purposes. Obviously you could just use one as a coaster itself if you want to do so, but you can also use them as the soldering challenge. You can find different SMD resistor sizes, so like the one on the right, that is pretty much what you find on graphics cards for shunt resistors. So if you want to yeah, do shunt modding in the future, then you can train this first here if you want to. And then you can go smaller in smaller SMD sizes up to 01005. So that's extremely small. And I can tell you that's, that's pretty difficult to solder even if you're experienced, it's not so easy. And compared to last time, we listened to the feedback that you wanted to have more soldering challenges. That's why you have, yeah, those spare PCBs included. And in the soldering challenge, you can see that all the resistors are included five times. So you can, you can do that on all of these PCBs. In addition, you will only need 20 RGB LEDs on here. And as you can see in the semiconductor box, there are 30 included. So you can also train uh, soldering RGB LEDs on here, but I would recommend to maybe just do four or five first and keep some spare for the real deal later. 
On the page of Elmo Labs, you can also find a detailed description of all the items that are included, all the small capacitors and stuff, and also an explanation what they are for, what are the characteristics like mechanically and also electrically, what are the electrical units, what do they mean, and just some basics for the electrical engineering. So it might make sense before you start working on a project to just read through all of this first. What's obviously not included is all the soldering gear. So no soldering iron or station and no flux and also no soldering tin. That would be the basics that you need those three components for the soldering. But I will put some recommendations in the description below. We will just start with the soldering challenge first and the biggest size of resistor that is included. I would also recommend that you get some kind of tweezers like these that will just make the part handling a lot easier. Also, there are a lot of different ways how you can solder on SMDs, so not sure if mine is the correct one, but it's just the way I like to do it. What I like to do first is just apply a little bit of flux on the pad first. And next apply a bit of solder. Then I'm grabbing the part and put it above. If it's in the right place, I just hold it down a little bit from the top and then put the soldering iron to the side. So the first resistor would be in place and obviously you could always wipe off the flux afterwards. And it's exactly the same process for smaller parts. So I just apply a little bit of flux first on here and apply some solder again. So 0402 is a good size if you're able to do it. It is still very common on all the graphics cards and motherboards. Same as 0201, but 01005 is a little bit more rare. We will do a one RGB LED, for example, and you can see that there's a small marking on the side. There is this uh, the triangle you can see. This marks pin number four, and if you look at the soldering pads, you can see that pin one is always marked. This means that you have to place the triangle opposite of the marking of one. But apart from that, the process is going to be exactly the same. You will first apply some flux, make sure you get some soldering tin onto the pads and then just fix the LED. Once you are confident with your basic soldering, we will move on to the control PCB. For that, we will need the passive elements and also the semiconductor where we already got our RGB LED from and where the microcontroller is included. Also, you will find those tiny bags that are marked with the parts and what kind of size you need. We will start in this area first where the microcontroller will sit on and I will first again prepare all the pads with some soldering tin and then add the components and solder them on. And I always apply a lot of flux that will definitely, yeah, make it a lot easier. With microcontroller, there is a very tiny dot on the case, on top of the case, that indicates the pin number one. And this would be the right direction. Thank you. 
Now we will have to place the surrounding small SMDs like R1 and R2. Those are for example 10 kilo ohm resistors and since those resistors or also capacitors don't have a polarity it doesn't matter in which direction you will solder them on. After those parts are in place we will continue with the mechanical parts like the USB type C header on front and the button but everything that we just showed will be exactly the same for all those parts no matter if it's a pin header or the RGB LED. After you completed that task, you are left with adding those pin headers and they are responsible for connecting this PCB with the top PCB. And with this, the lower part of the PCBs would be done. So I have to clean it though. And now I'm moving on to the top part of the PCB, which you should be familiar with already because it's the same PCB that we used for the first soldering challenge. Also cleaned it a little bit with some alcohol. This is how the PCB would look like, the one for the top side. Also, one thing to note is that you should pay attention that the alignment of those pin headers is very accurate. Otherwise, you will have trouble fitting both PCBs together. And once both sides are completed, you can connect them with each other. And the last thing to do is to connect it via USB-C. Then there is a switch on the side and a button. And through the button on the side, you can cycle through all the predefined, pre-programmed RGB modes. You can see that all the LEDs are working nicely. So that's it for today and also the short video. I wish you the best of luck in the participation of the giveaway that you can get one of those their coasters. We also pre-packed them all ready to make sure that we can ship them as fast as possible. It's a worldwide giveaway and it will end on Tuesday afternoon so we can ship it out before Christmas. Not sure if it will arrive in time I mean, otherwise it might be something in between uh, Christmas and New Year's Eve. And all the ones from the Thermal Grizzly shop are also already pre-packed. So they will leave, um, if you order today, then they will leave on Monday or Tuesday and they should probably make it in time. I wish you the best of luck for the giveaway. Make sure you participate down below. I will put all the other links in there as well. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye bye.